Konnichiwa and welcome to episode 27, Building the Bathroom, part 7. First of all, a massive apology for it being so long since we've posted. Singapore reopened its borders allowing international visitors in, which meant that I was able to reopen my business, Hello Singapore Tours, and I got busy. In fact, myself and Itchy have just got back a few days ago from a one month trip to Bali, where I'm in the process of opening Hello Bali Tours, and to Singapore, where I've been catching up with my team and we're in the process of launching a brand new bike tour. And in other, even more exciting news, I'm pregnant, 16 weeks. Hospital registrations, checkups and testing has also been keeping us extremely busy. But now that everything has started to calm down again, I will endeavour to keep these YouTube episodes coming out more regularly again. On this episode, we're starting the waterproofing process. The last time I updated you on the bathroom, we left it looking like this. We'd just finished putting up the plasterboard and the ceiling frames. Our waterproofing process has got four main stages. Corking, applying a waterproofing membrane, tiling and grouting, and then more corking. We watched a lot of YouTube videos to figure out A, which waterproofing system would be best for us, and B, how to do it. The two videos which we found most useful are shown now, and a link to them is in this episode's description. Ultimately, we decided to use a water-resistant plasterboard and to cover that in a waterproofing membrane. Here's a simple diagram to illustrate our system. We've left a 5mm gap between the wall and the floor. The idea being that if any water puddled on the floor was able to get through our waterproofing system, it would not be able to soak up and into the wall itself. We will apply corking into that gap and also at the joining point where two pieces of plasterboard meet each other. The waterproofing membrane is like a kind of rubbery paint. We'll apply that to the walls and at the points where the plasterboard meets plasterboard, we will use our reinforcing anti-fracture mesh tape. We'll also use that where the floor meets the wall. We'll cut down the size and then fold it into an L shape. Once we've reinforced all of the joining points, we'll cover all of the walls in two or three layers. In this episode, I'm going to show you those first two stages of waterproofing. And in the next episode, I'll show you the third and fourth stage. The third stage is to do the tiling and the grouting. And after that, we will apply yet more corking on all of the joining points. So that means we have got a five layer defense system, which will hopefully be enough to stop any water from penetrating through our bathroom and rotting our walls. The first layer will be the corking on top of the tiles. The second layer will be the tiles and the grouting itself. The third layer will be the waterproofing membrane, which we will have covered all of the walls in. The fourth layer will be the bottom layer of corking between the floor and the wall. And the fifth layer is of course the small gap which we left. We're using Loctite tub and tile corking. It's compatible with the waterproofing membrane. It's 100% waterproof. Um, it's designed for use in humid and steamy areas. So it's perfect for the bathroom and it has something inside which will prevent mold and mildew growth. The first place that Itchy is applying the corking is between the gap that we left between the wall and the stone shelf. Just to orientate you, he's currently standing in what will be our kitchen. Thank you. 
This is then repeated along the join between the wall and the floor. And in this very tight spot behind the bath edge. I get the easier job of covering all of the screw heads. We've also filled the joining points around the window frame. Today is a monumental day because we're going to be waterproofing our wet room which feels like a massive step forward in this never-ending bathroom project that we've undertaken. Uh, we've just finished preparing the room and we're going to be using this waterproofing membrane. You can't buy this in Japan so we've imported it from the US. America smells like America. <laughs> We started off covering all of the corking. We bought this anti-fracture mesh tape from Amazon US. It's about 17 US dollars a roll. Uh, it's especially made for use with the waterproofing membranes or as we've just been calling it rubber paint. And it's a kind of synthetic material. It's, it's not fiberglass so it's perfectly safe to use. There's no dangerous particles or itchiness when you're touching it. We used a rubber putty knife to squash the material into the corners to ensure a tight fit and then we covered the tape with another layer of the rubber paint to make sure it was fully saturated. The window area is high risk because there's a lot of joining points, corners and edges where water could seep through. Also, those areas are more prone to water pooling and dripping. We started off by reinforcing the gaps on the interior corners. Then we did a layer of rubber paint on the inside frame. Next we reinforced the joining points on the exterior corners and edges. First the top, then the bottom. Another layer of rubber paint on the window frame and then we reinforce the exterior corners on the right side and the left side.
I don't think any water's going to sneak through this fortress. At this point we realised we were getting paint in our hair so we put hats on. The corners around the bath are super risky, so we did as much reinforcing as possible. Itchy's folded this mesh tape into a very tiny L. The bottom of the L sits on top of the stone. It's only a few millimetres wide, so after we put the tiles on the wall, you won't actually see it. It will be completely covered. This is a technique that Itchy has invented himself. We haven't actually seen anybody else doing this, but Logic tells us that this would be the best way in stopping any water from getting into that joining point between the wall and the shelf. Of course, we might not be right, but in our heads, it makes complete sense. This tiny L technique is then repeated on the other convex corners. Itchy's like a surgeon. In both his precision and his rubber gloves, hat and blue t-shirt setup. We will call this Operation Bathroom. Once all of the reinforcements were dry, we used a mini roller to cover the walls. I've actually forgotten how many layers we did, but I think it was three. We kept going until the walls were a very solid blue colour. 
you've probably noticed that we've got an awful lot of rubber paint left in that tub. I completely miscalculated the volume of rubber paint that we would need. I thought this three and a half gallon or 13.2 litre bucket would only just be enough for our bathroom. How wrong I was. I think we could do another two rooms with the leftovers. The total cost of this waterproofing system was just under 400 US dollars and about half of that was actually the shipping cost to Japan. This kind of waterproofing system is simply not available in Japan because most bathrooms here are the prefabricated plastic unit baths. Older bathrooms like the tiled one in our house had a black waterproofing paper behind the tiles. To be fair, the condition of the wall wasn't too bad, but you'll probably also remember that we had two completely rotten dough dyes. So far, we're very happy with the system that we chose. It was extremely easy to install. On the next two episodes of building the bathroom, we'll install the ceiling and do the tiling and grouting. But before that, I'm going to make some episodes showing you what we've been doing in the kitchen and other areas of the house. So stay tuned. <laughs>